If you're buying an RV, be it new or used, you're looking at a pretty significant investment. And if you're buying a towable RV, you'll need to buy a truck and that together could be almost the cost of a home. When we first bought our first RV, we made a lot of mistakes, so we'd like to go over some of the things that you need to look for and help you not make those same mistakes. This week's video tells you step-by-step step how to purchase your first RV. Hi, I'm Felix. And I'm Cindy. In 2019, we sold everything and moved into our RV full-time. Since then, we've traveled the country following my nursing contracts. We, we are, are the Roaming Gones. Hey everyone, for those of you new here, I'm Felix. And I'm Cindy. Welcome back to the Roaming Gomes. And as we pointed out in the opener, Cindy is a travel nurse. And if you'd like to get some information on travel nursing or just nursing in general, she's got her own channel. It's called Real Life Nursing and there'll be a link in the description below. The first thing you gotta look at when you're buying an RV or considering buying an RV is what are you gonna use it for? Are you going to be full-time? Are you gonna be a, what we call a weekend warrior? Or are you just gonna be doing like maybe a, a trip here and there? That's gonna be a big determination about what kind of RV you should or shouldn't buy. Patience is a key whenever you're looking for an RV. You don't wanna just go out and just start looking and buy one the first one you see or the first one you like. It's very important to think ahead of time about how many people are you going to need to sleep? Are you just going to be you and your spouse? You're going to bring kids? Do you plan to have other people join you sometimes? And what kind of floor plan would you like? Do you want more space in the living area or more space in the bedroom area? Is a large shower important to you? Um, these things that you need to think about beforehand so that when you go into a dealership or you talk to someone about buying their RV, you can know ahead of time the things that are deal breakers for you and things that you really, really want to have in your RV. Take a look at what different kind of RVs there are. You have A, B, C, you have hashtag van life, you know, <laughs> which would be a class B. You have towables, you have motorhomes. What you have to have a firm idea in your mind what kind of RV you want. I mentioned Class B. Class B isn't going to be appropriate for it. it a couple's going to be pushing it. Yeah. Okay, but there are a lot of couples out there living the van life, so. But once you get beyond a couple, you're not going to be looking at a Class B. If you want a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, you're going to have to buy a vehicle to pull it. Which means you're going to have to factor in towing capacity. Don't buy the RV before you know what truck you're going to have. And if you're going to buy a truck after you get the RV, know what it is you're going to be pulling. Know not the dry weight, but the loaded weight. Dry weight is as this thing comes out of the factory. No water, no propane, none of it. You have to factor in what your total loaded weight is going to be. And that will help you determine how much tow capacity you need. Ask me why I know so much about this. <laughs> because when we bought our first RV, we already had the truck and we bought an RV that quite honestly at loaded capacity was at or slightly above the capacity of that truck. Don't be us. <laughs> Of course, a very important thing to look at is how much money do you have to spend? That might determine the size and the, the type of RV that you get. Uh, you want to make sure that you factor in maintenance, um, gas, propane, all the other expenses that go with it, insurance, all the things that go with having an RV, and make sure that what you decide on is something that's going to fit into your budget and then you can get a pre-approval before you even go looking you can get pre-approved pre so that you can stay within your budget 
a lot of times, of course, salesmen, their job is to sell you something and their job is to sell you the most that they can sell you. So if you don't already have a budget in mind, if you don't already have a top number that you can or are willing to spend, then you can get kind of maneuvered around in a lot with a lot of RVs and the next one looks better than the next one and the next one looks better than the last one and and you can soon find yourself way out of your budget if you're not careful so it's important in fact just mention that to the salesperson if you're going to a dealership talk to the salesperson about this is our top dollar we can't go over that and that way maybe even make it a little lower than what you really can because they're they are going to attempt to sell you something more expensive so you have to know your limits before you go in so that you can put that limit on the salesperson and say, we're not going to look at that one. It's way out of our budget. And don't limit yourself to just dealerships. Look at dealerships and private sellers. There are great RV specific selling sites out there. RV Trader is one of them. Craigslist, even Facebook Marketplace. But if you're going to be buying a used RV, in no way, shape, or form should you fall for any of these scams that are out there, which there are a lot of them. And some of them require you, oh, send me this much money as a deposit, and I'll hold it so that you can come look at it. And then you get there, and there's no RV, and there's no person, and sometimes the address doesn't even exist. Only hand over money when you're getting something back. And in the instance of a used RV, unequivocally get yourself a professional inspection. I had 41 years in manufacturing quality, and I kind of know what to look for in manufacturing. I, I do not consider myself a RV specific inspector, but I definitely knew what to look for. And unfortunately, I didn't use any of that prowess or ability when we bought our first RV. We basically looked at the layout, said this is what we want, and bought it, period. We got kind of lucky because that RV really wasn't like one of these nightmare RVs you hear about, but lucky it was because it could have been. So get somebody that is a professional to inspect it. Or if you feel comfortable doing so, maybe you're a carpenter or, or a, a contractor, inspect every inch of this thing and every function that it performs, whether that's used or new. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if a salesman will not allow you to inspect and see every single function this thing performs, walk away. Same thing for a used one. If they won't allow you to either bring in an inspector or be shown exactly what this thing can do, walk away. That includes everything, running the water, even the, the, the waste tanks. Check for leaks under the sinks and toilet. Have them open and close the windows. Turn on the TV, turn on the radio, turn on all the lights, everything. If this thing has it and it functions, you want to see it function. Heating, air conditioning. Correct. And don't let anybody tell you, oh, we don't have a hookup that we can we can put it in, plug it in electrically. Oh well, I'm gonna go buy another one. You have to have patience. I didn't have them open and close all the windows on the new rig we have. And what did I end up have happening to me? The window blew up twice because it wasn't installed correctly correct we would have found that out had we have them open those windows before we bought it simple matter all i would have had to do was have our salesman just open that window and it would have exploded for him <laughs> and that would have been the end of that 
patience. I can't say it enough. Cindy said it to start the video. Patience. You, unless you are being put in a situation where you have to go live in an RV immediately, wait. Wait until you have everything that you want and you've been able to see everything operate including make sure that you look for water damage water is the bane of all rvs if you see so much as a bubble in a wall walk away unless you're willing to do the work to replace that wall where and wherever and reseal wherever it was leaking from because if you're buying a used rv and you see a slight little bubble in the wall i can guarantee you they did something to cover that up and there were there was more bubbling if you see any delamination where you see bubbling on the outside of the rig that is an absolute walk away Unless you're willing to completely rebuild your RV, and, and maybe that's your goal, you, you want to build a, a shell into an RV that you can live in, okay, that's fine. But make sure you're getting it at, like, cut rate prices. <laughs> Lift up the mattress in your RV, if you're, especially if you're buying a used one. Always lift the mattress, pull it out, look underneath it. That is a place where water and mold tend to go if there's any water leaks at all. If it's in the end that the mattress is in, you're going to find something horrific under there. So be sure that you move things around, look in closets, look in corners, look under, feel the carpet, feel the floors. Is there anything that's mushy feeling when you walk around, especially in corners and on edges, that things that you wouldn't normally see just walking through the middle of a room? Be sure you check those things out. And inside the outside compartments as well. Mm -hmm. We actually had one that we looked at prior to buying this one at Camping World. And it was a new RV. It was a brand new RV. And when I opened up the one storage compartment, there was standing water in there. That pretty much put the end on that one completely. The salesperson said they thought somebody had left it open during a rainstorm or something, but the water was standing there and that's going to do damage. Exactly. The two things we've stressed here, one is patience on the front end, and while you're there, be willing to walk away. There's always another RV out there. There are hundreds of them on a lot. There's always other dealerships to go to. There's always other opportunities. There's nothing that is making you have to buy an RV today. So be willing when you walk in, know that you're going to take your time, look for what you want, and be willing to walk away if that salesperson's not willing to work with you and to do all these things that make it necessary for you to know exactly what you're getting into. And just a quick tip here, don't buy at an RV show. They're really not reducing the prices as much as they indicate that they are. And a lot of times, these are the RVs that they haven't been able to sell off their lot. Unless you're going there and you're seeing some, some new company, uh, Brinkley comes to mind, where they're introducing a new model and there it is at the RV show. Wait till after the RV show. Go to the dealership and say, this is what I could have got it for at the RV show. What are you going to give it to me for? A lot of times you're going to find that the RVs that were at the show are now back on their lots and for sale at cut rate prices. And if you have any interest in finding out why RVs are considered such low quality and why they're allowed to get away with it, take a look at this video.